Hi, I'm Philip. Let's talk about log management. Or actually, before we dive into log management, let's take a look at technology and moves and counter moves as an introduction. So back in the very old days, well before my time, we had mainframes and terminals that were connecting to them. Um, so you wouldn't have the power of a full computer on your desk, but you would only connect to that mainframe remotely. Um, and after some time, then we moved over to personal computers, sometimes also called fat clients, heavy, rich, or thick clients. And part of that was you could work offline, you wouldn't need that mainframe and all of the, those centralized server capacities. Uh, and it was, for example, better in graphics heavy use cases. So it was kind of a move away from that only centralized resource to a more decentralized resource. Um, and then some time later on, we came over to thin clients. So I remember back when I started university, for example, we had Citrix all over the, the campus and everybody could connect to their setup or load their setup basically on the thin clients, which was fascinating from a technology point of view and it gave you a lot of mobility but it was also quite a pain to actually get started because I remember every time we wanted to load this up it would take a couple of minutes until everything was there and actually workable so while interesting this was still kind of like painful and again another counter move happened after that so after that we kind of all got our own laptops and suddenly we had everything that we wanted offline again could carry it with us and we wouldn't need to connect to any remote servers again the university campus was saving on centralized server capacities and only needed to provide wi-fi while we all carried our own laptops around so it was kind of like the counter move and now today we have kind of like moved in the opposite direction again where Pretty much everything we do is in the cloud. It's maybe, I don't know, some shared Google Doc. It's something on GitHub. Nothing is really anywhere um, on our end devices anymore, but it's really just spread out all over the place again. And I think this kind of like move and counter move in technology is a very nice example of how technologies often reach some limit or you hit some pain point. And then you need to kind of like change concept or switch over to something um, to make that pain point away. And you normally trade that pain point for something else. And then at some later point, maybe the pendulum is swinging back again that you make that counter move. And I think that centralized versus decentralized in computing is a nice example of that pendulum swinging back and forth. And maybe at some point we'll move away from the cloud again and say like for privacy reasons or because our devices are so powerful, we want to have everything locally again. Maybe, not necessarily. Um, but what does all of that have to do with logs? So that general topic of change and requirements and trade-off is also something that I want to discuss now in more detail around logs and how those are also are moving kind of like back and forth between different paradigms and how you can always trade your pain points for new opportunities and potentially also new pain points again. So why am I talking about that? I work for Elastic as a developer advocate. So I normally talk about the good stuff that Elastic is doing or all the technologies that we have. And while I will cover part of that, I want to take a bit of a step back today and show you the bigger picture of what is generally happening in the log ecosystem. Since logging is kind of like pretty clear or dear to our heart, we want to keep that and kind of like focus on what is generally happening in the ecosystem, what are we doing, what are others doing, and how can that kind of like move log management forward. So this is kind of the, the gist of this talk. So starting with log management, probably the, the first thing a lot of people are doing or were using was something like tail F, or maybe you were a little more advanced and used less plus capital F. So while you could still follow the logs as they were flowing in, um, you could break out of that follow basically, move up and down, even search in that file in the error log here, and then could jump back into following. Whereas with tail, you would always need to move out of tail, switch to another program to search for anything or move up and down and then head back to tail. So less is kind of like the the slightly more advanced version of tailing or following that file. Um, and that worked 
until you have this very large log file and you're basically that little submarine trying to find anything in that huge titanic log file that we have here so we had to kind of like switch our tools a little bit and one way to do that probably was or is grep where we can say for example we have an error and we want to find that error in that log file but we just don't want to find the error but we want to find the most common errors or common unique errors in that log file um, so we are sorting um, on the the unique lines um, sorting recursively and getting then the five top ones of those so we would get the top five unique errors from our log file so this was nice and worked and Many people are still using that, but it still has some problems. So for example, if you have any horizontal scaling and you have stuff on not just one node or container or whatever you have, but five or 10 or more, it somehow gets painful to grab the log files there. It like, well, maybe you could try to download all the log files and grab them, or you can have 10 parallel SSH sessions to those servers uh, and then grab there. But that's still all not a lot of fun. Also, if you have distributed applications where it's not just one log file, but you need to piece together 20 different log files, grab alone is probably not going to give you a very clear picture of what is happening there. Also, if you have anything containerized or using Kubernetes where containers come and go and the logs are more ephemeral, grab is also not that great in, in that regard because if the log file for a specific container has been removed. Um, it's gone and you won't find what has been up there anymore. So we need a new solution um, that is kind of like moving out of like just searching through a centralized log file. Um, and along comes or came Splunk, for example. Being relatively early on in that log game there, Splunk provided the centralization. So if you have an application that you need to horizontally scale or that is more distributed, you could just have your log forwarders that would forward your logs to the so-called peer nodes that store the data, potentially replicate between them. So if one of them dies, you still have the logs. So you will not lose any important log messages even if a node dies. And then you have a search head that allows you to search through all of those log files or logs that have been forwarded by your log forwarders. So that is both more scalable and also much easier to work in a distributed fashion or horizontally scaled fashion. Um, so this was a, a big step forward for log management and it built in terms of queries on relatively similar concepts. So for example, I could say the source is this specific error log file here. And then I run a regex query and just search for everything that is fatal in there. Or I say, oh, I take the Nginx access logs. I take the one, the thousand first entries uh, and then get the top 50 client IPs in there. So it still looks kind of similar what we were doing grab before and where we were piping one command into the next. So it was kind of like a very natural evolution going from that single log file to a more centralized approach and then working with more or less similar queries or concepts at least. Also Splunk generally has two approaches. The event index is minimally structured where very few fields are indexed or structured and the rest is just free, free flowing and you can grab or just search through it un, in any unstructured way you, they also have now a metrics index which allows you a more highly structured approach which for example if you want to show any metrics um, might add a lot of performance gain there uh, but by default events are minimally structured so you don't need to parse your logs, for example, you don't need to extract all the different pieces to make the most out of that. So it was pretty easy to go from there just from a regular log file. The problem is speed reached kind of a, a bump at some point, especially if you have a large amount of log files, where your searches would just get slower and slower because with minimal structure means you have to search through very large amounts of data um, to find what you might be looking for. The other thing is, it can get pretty expensive since Splunk is a commercial offering. So you will pay a lot of money if you have a lot of ingestion of data going on there. So it was probably time for the pendulum to swing another direction again. And the thing that came 
I don't want to say after it, but that kind of like evolved out of that situation was the famous Elk stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana to get logs, parse them, store them, and then visualize them. Coming from an, eco an open source uh, background, it provided a much cheaper alternative. And also technology wise, it just took a very different approach because Elasticsearch being the data store, storing all the data comes from full text search which leads to one of the very common questions like, why would anybody put logs into a full text search engine? I get it for, if I want to search Wikipedia, I use full text search engine, but do I really do that for my logs as well? Well, kind of like the way you can see it is that storing the logs is kind of the boring part. What you want is you want to find your relevant logs quickly and that is exactly what a full text search engine basically is doing. So that's why full text search makes sense for logs as well. Um, and the way that the data is structured there, if you have never seen Elasticsearch, Lucene, or any other systems built on them, is you take whatever log messages, for example, you get in, you tokenize them, which basically means breaking up them up into the individual words, at least in Western languages. Um, so you have that dictionary with the individual words. Um, you have the frequency of how many times they are appearing and in which documents. So if I'm afterwards searching for coming or fury or whatever, um, I, have, I don't have to search through all that text body anymore, but I can just look up that term in a dictionary and then find the documents where I have those hits and retrieve just those. So by structuring the data upfront more and doing some more work there, it makes searching much more performant and targeted in the end. Um, so you have these full text search capabilities. It Lucene also allows you to do aggregations, filtering, sorting on that data. So you are not limited. You could, for example, get the statistics of how many errors, uh, warrants, and debugs you have in your, your logs um, just to see how the distribution is and changes over time. Or you could filter down just on error or fatal messages, or you could sort by the most recent log events that you have been collecting. So you have all the features that you basically need for log management. A query though looks very different than what you had in other systems before. So here, for example, I'm searching logs and I'm using a Boolean query using the more structured nature of Elasticsearch that you have fields, for example, in the field log.level. So we have a field level in the sub document in the, the object log. Um, and that one is limited just to errors. So we are filtering and making better use of that structured nature of the data that is stored in Elasticsearch. Um, you could also in Kibana then just, for example, filter down on a container image name, and I'm having a Java logging 1.0 image here. And then, for example, in Kibana, I've retrieved all of those logs with whatever timestamp. And then I could only highlight, for example, only the arrows since I have nicely broken those out here. So all of that structure can be used to make your search faster and potentially also more powerful and get to what you want in a faster way. The problem with that is that that parsing is potentially complicated and expensive unless you write in a structured format like JSON right away, which would be highly recommended. If you don't have that, you might need to write some parsing rules. And there is, of course, some overhead for all of that structure and indexing and creating all those index structures to make your searches more performant afterwards. So it will take extra overhead in terms of computation, it will take extra disk space and it will potentially take some extra memory as well to keep all of those uh, index structures uh, in memory and keep them quickly available. So there is a cost to all of that. So once again, it's kind of time that our pendulum is swinging another way or that people were like, okay, this is, this is good, but I still have pain points here. So Loki from Grafana, um, is trying to take some of these pain points away in a different way. So that the structure that Loki is trying to do is where while Elasticsearch is a general purpose data store, Loki is exactly focused on logs and is trying to take some clever trade-offs to make that specific problem around logs um, more or cheaper 
and keep the performance good while taking some trade-offs there. So it has broken up right in the read path. Um, it can ingest data, though it doesn't need all of that high structure that, for example, Elasticsearch or Lucene would expect. And it will store the data then in an index, um, which allows easy access and is kind of like the metadata around it, and then chunks, which are like the actual message that you have in there. And those chunks can, for example, be stored on very cheap object stores like Amazon S3. And then with the help of that index, finding the right chunks that you want to search, um, you can query that. And by taking these right trade-offs, having chunks in the indices and potentially some result caching, you can get very good results um, while basically cutting some corners or avoiding some things that Lucene is doing that are not strictly necessary for the, the log use case. So that what Loki is doing is it has a key value hash um, that forms the so-called data stream ID. Um, so for example, I'm saying my component is the printer and this is the specific location and I'm grouping the log level together. So I take all of those three attributes, I hash them together and that's the stream ID. And all log messages for this stream then end up in this chunk based on this ID. And then you take that chunk, compress it, and store it, for example, on an object store. Now, if you change any one of these attributes, you would get a different um, stream ID, and that would go to another chunk. So if you know, for example, that you want to search for printers in one location and that specific error, um, the index will allow you to go to a chunk, like a small subset of all the logs, and then search through them. You don't have the complicated index structure for all of the messages within that, but you can pinpoint to that right subsection and then run a regular expression through that very efficiently. So that's kind of a trade-off that Loki is doing to keep search fast without having all of those index structures in the background by limiting it through to that um, stream ID and basically grouping relevant sections. Of course, the important part is that your searches are targeted enough that you don't have to search all the chunks, but that you can find the right subset of chunks that you want to search um, to make the most out of them. The queries look kind of familiar to what you had in prep. So for example, for my job, I'm searching for all errors. Or in Kafka, I'm running a regular expression and search for TSDB ops. Um, whatever I owe colon 2003. Or within Cassandra, I'm just searching for error equals um, whatever um, word I find after that. So the syntax is rather similar to what you were used from grep already. And then trying to take that centralizing the data, limiting it down to kind of like the right subset, and then running a grep through that subject section to avoid the pain points from what we had in grep earlier to make that work better again. Now, the problem here is that it's optimized for this specific use case. So if you have extracted the, the wrong um, key value pairs for the stream ID, you will need to search a large amount of data, which will be slower if you have like high network traffic. Um, it might cost you more on a cloud provider. So there are trade-offs for that but it is very optimized for that logs use case. So where does that leave us? Are we at the end of this journey, like everything is in the cloud, we're done, or maybe we're not done? Not really, we're still kind of like on the way to, to evolve that system. So there are a couple of interesting things going on in parallel right now. So one interesting project that has come up recently is Lucene Grep. Um, which is calling itself a grep-like utility based on Lucene monitor compiled with Graal VM native image. So you can invoke it very quickly from the shell and you don't have a long um, JVM starter time. Also the, I, the general idea is, um, or the author's idea here is that maybe you don't always want to write a regular expression because writing regular expressions can be a bit um, sometimes challenging or painful. Um, and there's always this old joke that what is the plural of regex? It's regret. 
because nobody can ever read their regular expressions again. So maybe you don't want to write everything as a regular expression. And you kind of want to marry the, the, the power of leucine that you have, tokenization, and you maybe have stemming and some other advanced leucine concepts. Um, put those on top of a Boolean query and then maybe still add a regular expression feature to that and have like that more powerful feature set combined with quick invocation times on the command line. And you don't need that entire server infrastructure running to search your logs. It's a very early or in a very early stage as a project, but it is kind of an interesting approach where these different things try to come together in a new way to kind of avoid or to, to avoid pain points that we had in the past. Um, another topic that is always swimming back and forth, I would say, is this more structure and, and less structure. So Splunk, also for performance reasons, um, is adding more and more structured fields. And I think some of their machine learning capabilities, for example, require a pretty high structure in their data to actually have a machine learning algorithm make the most out of that data. And Elasticsearch, which comes from that highly structured side, has recently added runtime fields where you can have a message and you can extract some parts like a, a virtual field basically at runtime. So you could run a, a grok pattern or a regular expression to extract a specific part of a message A, so you don't have to create all those index structures. And B, because sometimes you come up with or you figure out that your log pattern needs to extract some information that you didn't think about at first and, and that you want to extract later on. Reindexing all that data in the right uh, index structure would be very expensive, so you might want to do that with a runtime feed. So it can take some pain to get started away, and it fixes up potentially your data while keeping the cost maybe lower. Whereas Splunk is trying to add more structure to take some of their speed and limitations um, around not having enough structure away. So it's kind of like adding features from the other side to make the most out of that or to avoid the pain points that each system had in the past. Um, another topic is, for example, features. Loki has, in just in the recent, most recent version in 2.2, um, added multi-line logs, which was, I think, the most highly requested feature in Loki because multi-line logs are a thing that happen quite frequently. And Elasticsearch, at the same time, has a lot of the features and can do, I don't want to say everything, but can do many things. There, it's more about making it more log-specific and getting away from that general purpose data store and having more optimized data structures, for example, for logs. So for example, Elasticsearch has recently added a wildcard field, which allows more performant wildcards or grep-like or grep queries. Um, it has recently added searchable snapshots, which basically takes the snapshot, the backup, which can be stored on an object store and can mount them to let Elasticsearch actually search that data. So you can also move data to an object store and don't need to keep it on an, a hot running node anymore, but you can search an object store or match on the text field. That one is pretty clever. So coming from the full text search side, um, what you want in full text search is you will always want to search, be able to search for phrases and you want to have that score, the, the relevancy, like how relevant is what I'm searching for, how relevant are these different documents. In logs, you normally don't have that much relevancy. Like you don't really care if that log line is so much more relevant than that other log line. It's like they contain the error message that I'm looking for. I want those. I don't care about that score. So match only text requires less disk space by not extracting all of that information, storing it in the index structures to make it more performant and cheaper to run for the log specific use case. So there it's competition is keeping you sharp to make you move in the right direction. That's really what is happening here. It's either adding or broadening the feature set or sharpening the specific use case and what is in there. So to wrap this up, there is this um, nice quote from Edward Stemming. Um, True or not, there's some debate about that. But I still like it. It is not necessary to change. Survival is not mandatory. So as a system, if you stop changing and adapting to the pain points and requirements, either because ephemeral logs are becoming 
more and more common or because scale is becoming more and more common. If your tooling cannot adapt to that, maybe it's not made for the future or for these scenarios. So while it's not necessary to adapt to that, um, if you want to survive as a tool, you probably still have to do that. Um, the one question that I'm maybe expecting now is what is the benchmark between the different tools and show, show me how A is much more or much faster than B. And I'm afraid there is no good way to benchmark that. Um, my favorite comic is here about the two different or two systems that are benchmarked on it under similar conditions. And one is much better than the other. And you can see under similar conditions, the house can't has been killed and the squid is thriving. So even though these conditions might be the same, maybe those are not your conditions. So while these vendor benchmarks or so-called benchmarking can always be fun, it is not necessarily helpful for you because you potentially need a specific feature set or you have specific requirements in what hardware you have and what your read and write ratio is or what specific types of query you're actually running. And if you change any of these parameters, it changes how all the systems behave in comparison to each other. So while you can always do benchmarks for yourself and your use case, and that totally makes sense, um, as a vendor, you cannot do that. So I will not provide any benchmarks here. Though, of course, you should always benchmark your own tools to make sure that they don't get slower or worse over time, like the slow boiling frog problem. So benchmark yourself strictly. Um, but vendor benchmarking against competitors can be informative to find gaps and improve them. But it's not what you should put out because probably nobody has exactly the same scenario that you were benchmarking in the first place. To wrap it up, let's have a discussion about features, speed, and cost. And what is the right trade-off for you? And where should tools be added? Thanks so much for joining. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, let me know. And let's hop over to the discussion. Thanks a lot for joining.